Hi everyone, in this video I'll be showing you a short tutorial on how you can set up a simple shell in Karamba. So to start off, we're going to set a simple rectangle in Grasshopper using the rectangle component. This is going to be on the world xy plane and our dimensions for the x and the y are going to be 10 meters. So our domain will be 0 to 10 for both x and y. Let's now convert this into a mesh by using the mesh plane component. Taking our rectangle as the input, our default faces count are 10 for the width and 10 for the height. You can input a slider if you want to decrease or increase the count. I'm just going to leave it as a default. To visualize the actual mesh edges, you need to make sure that you have the mesh edges turned on. In the display settings. So if you go to display, make sure that preview mesh edges is turned on or you can use control M. Now that we have our mesh, we can actually bring this into Chrome. We're just going to look at our mesh quickly. This is a mesh that has 121 vertices and 100 faces. When we bring a mesh into Chrome by using the mesh shell component, any quad faces that are located in the mesh are going to be automatically converted into triangle data face. As you see here in the output of our element component. So we have 121 vertices, but now we have 200 triangles. We're going to define a cross section for our shell by using the cross section component and using the drop down menu to select shell constant. Let's give this cross section a height of five centimeters, which we just input there and apply to our shell. Now we want to also define the support points. I'm going to use one of these tools that my colleague Georg created. You can watch one of the previous videos uh, where he explained these components and how you can install them. The link can be found in uh, the description below. So we're going to take our points from the mesh to shell here. And what this component allows us to do is basically filter out within a certain X, Y, or Z threshold. In this case, I want my supports to be on the left-hand side of our mesh. In this case, I'm going to assign our threshold to be 0 to 0 0.5. Applying this into our X input, you'll see that now we've selected these points. These points can now be converted into a support by using the support component, as follows. Taking in our points and now setting all the boundary conditions for translation and rotation for our supports. For our loads, we're going to take the points on the opposite side of our shell. So I'm going to actually copy these components and now define the threshold to be 9.5 to 10. So now we have these points on the other side of our mesh. And now I'm going to use the loads component and select point load to define our point loads. Our force is going to be a negative one kilonewton force. So I'm going to use a unit Z with a minus one multiplier as follows and apply that into our loads component. Now we have all our components to set up the model. We're going to use the assemble model component to collect everything into a Chroma model. Taking our elements, taking our supports, and taking our loads. Now we already have an inf some information about the total mass of our shell. We didn't define any material, but the default material, if you do not define any, is a steel material. That's why you can already get the mass output in kilograms. We have now the model. We can run a quick analysis taking the analyze component 
and plugging it into model. We can get already some information about the maximum displacement in our shell, in this case 15.8 centimeters. And to visualize the results, I'm going to use the model view component as well as the shell view. So the model view, as you all probably know, allows us to control the deformation scale. And the shell view allows us to preview the thickness, utilization, displacements, and stresses inside our shell. So if we turn on our utilization, we can see the color mapping of utilization on the shell. And with the legend component, we can see the actual utilization values where blue refers to tension, 10.2%, and red is compression as follows. We can also activate it for displacement and principal stresses. When we're looking at principal stresses, we can control the position of results where zero is the axis of our shell, one is the top surface of our shell, and negative one is the bottom surface of our shell. So that's it for the basic introduction into how you can create a simple shell and analyze it in Chroma 3D. There is the shell section component, which allows you to analyze the forces inside the shell. And you can watch this video, which will be also posted in the description below. Thank you very much for watching this video. Bye.